Hi, this is Greg with Walnut Ridge. Today we're going to do another orientation video. Um, today we're going to do the Outback 341 RD. So we'll start up here in the front. Now this is a different jack system normally than your standard travel trailer. This has got the bow stabilizing system on it. So it's got um, auto level, tongue jack, retract, extend. All those buttons are on the front. Now since we're in the showroom and it's leveled, I can't really mess with it too much. Um, but it's just got big buttons. You know, it doesn't have the, the uh, LCD display like a lot of them did. So this makes it a little bit easier. You got big buttons, you know exactly which what you're hitting. You got power buttons, they'll light it all up. And then you can kind of go from there as far as leveling. Um, it's got, you know, each individual jack can be controlled. So you can level it yourself manually if you'd like. Um, if not, you got your standard extend and retract for your front jack to get you on and off the truck. And behind that, we have your LP tanks. There's going to be two seven-gallon tanks. Both of them will be full at the time of purchase from Walnut Ridge. Um, it's got an LP regulator in the front that's an auto switchover regulator. Basically, what that'll do is it has two modes of operation. So you can either use it with both tanks on, and then that way, whichever way you have this lever pointing at, it'll draw off that tank first. Once that tank is empty, it'll automatically start pulling from the other tank. And that way, if you are running your refrigerator off gas or you're in some colder weather and have your furnace going, it won't shut off on you. Um, you will lose a little bit of BTU, so you might notice it. Um, and if that's the case, you notice it, you notice, okay, this is red now up in the front where it was green, which means that tank's empty. You wanna go ahead and flip it over this way. Now you're pulling from this tank. Um, and that way you're getting the, the maximum capacity out of it. Um, the other way to use it is to leave one tank off and leave one on. So whichever, let's say we have this one on, I have it pointing at this tank, it'll draw off this tank. Once this one's empty, that'll go red again, yet everything will stop working. And you'll have to come out here and manually turn this one on and flip the lever over to get it to start pulling again. That way, um, you always know you have one full tank left. So a lot of people run it that way so they never get caught without um, LP. Behind that, you'll, you'll have a 12 volt dip, uh, deep cycle marine battery. That's gonna do your lights, um, your full water pump, multiple things inside the unit. That battery will charge anytime you're plugged into your truck, as long as you have a working uh, charge line on the vehicle, or it'll charge anytime you're plugged into the uh, shore power in the back. Besides that, you have a battery disconnect, which is gonna be very useful. Um, when you're not using the camper, so let's say you take it home and you're just going to park it in the driveway, but you're going to use it here in the next week or so, you can go ahead and flip that off and that way it'll help save your battery life. Um, because if you don't, you're, um, you see you've got multiple little things on the inside like your uh, propane leak detector that are hardwired. So it'll always drain off that battery. So if you don't do that, your battery is going to be dead overnight or within a couple days. But if you do do that, it should at least last your battery for a while longer. Um, your battery still will drain, um, so don't think it's a, a fail safe that's going to last all year long or all winter long and your battery won't die. Let's see, uh, there's a switch down there which will control these lights up front. It does have a solar um, input down there at the bottom. So if you want to buy a solar panel kit, you can hook up to that. That will help charge your battery. From there you have your uh, water heater. This is a standard six gallon suburban water heater. It's electric and gas. The electric switch is here and there's also one on the inside. They're always here so on any model the electric switch more than likely is right here. There's some that have it uh, just on the inside only. Gas is, switch is located on the inside. Fairly easy operation. You have an anode rod drain plug. This is going to help um, keep the the bad stuff in the water from getting into the tank walls and eating that tank up that's what this rod's for so every time you take this rod out to drain it you're going to notice this rod's deteriorating um, it's going to look corroded typically you can just wire brush it off for now until it gets about coat hanger thin you can see the rod on the end of it and that's when you know you need to replace it when it really starts looking bad and you can see that rod it's an inch and a sixteenth socket that you're going to screw into here kind of you got to kind of play with it a little bit to get it screwed in there and after you do that tighten it up good from there you'll unbypass your water heater depending on which time of the year you purchased in um, the water heater bypass and this one's located underneath the closet and you'll go back there unbypass it which is just a single valve maybe two we'll have to see and from there you come out here open your pressure relief valve 
as long as you have water flowing eventually water is going to start shooting out of this valve and then you'll know it's full close the valve turn on your electric or gas and uh, start camping that's pretty much it they're really simple you can run the electric and the gas at um, the same time if you'd like to for a little bit faster recovery rate if not you can run um, just the electric you might as well if you're plugged in that way you can uh, save your lp let's see we'll go around to the other side to where all the water is uh, so down on this side in the middle of the unit um, behind this box here which uh, i do not have my key for is the key tv box um, so basically that's where if you're hooked up to satellite or cable at the park you'll plug into those two outputs on there it's just a it's just a box with two coaxes that say cat or cable and satellite and depending on which one you have you can hook into there and that there will power it'll run that uh, that line to each whichever tv um, you'd like it's got a little door here so you can shut the door but actually have your wires running um, while we're by the slides, I'll talk about the slide maintenance. Um, with cable driven slides, there's not a lot you need to do to the mechanism itself, but the uh, biggest important thing will be the rubber seals. I like to spray those every couple months, um, two to three months at least, um, at least every six months with a rubber seal conditioner that's going to keep these seals conditioned. Um, if you, you know, if you plan on keeping your unit for a long period of time, you don't want these to dry and crack and rot because over time that's going to stall out in water to get in the unit and water and uh, campers is you know, they don't make very good friends so um, that's very important to do you want to do that sides the top underneath the cables themselves don't need a lot of lubrication or anything you could you could get us a uh, can of dry lube and put a piece of cardboard back here and run a very light coat on them but it's really not necessary um, other than that you want to wash the roof top of the slide same you'll do with the roof with a cleaning conditioner uh, once a year to keep that rubber membrane uh, from drying up and cracking um, over years of years of use slide toppers help with that and that's also something a lot of people forget um, when they're camping is you want to get up there and sweep those slides off or blow them off or something before you run them in if you're in a heavily wooded uh, campground you got sticks and limbs and walnuts and whatever on top and you run that in and that seal scrapes it across there and you rip that roof you don't notice it for two months you're going to have a rotted slide roof and that's several thousand dollars to replace so that's something you definitely want to keep an eye on now below here you have your your, your dump tanks um, you have three handles you have two gray handles here on the outer um, sides and then you have a big one in the middle that's black black's always going to be your toilet pretty much on any camper and then the two grays are your bathroom sink um, and shower and then your kitchen sink only. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to tell which one, but I'm basing this because the kitchen's up front in this unit. And this one's the bathroom, which is a, towards the middle in the back. Um, when you dump these, you're gonna go to your dump site, you're gonna pop this cap off, drop all kinds of water on the ground. And that's something, you know, kinda glad it did that. Because that's why it's always very important um, before you start camping that you make sure that all your valves are shut and make sure because this cap is watertight and let's say that was black water and I've been using this uh, camping for you know the whole family for a weekend or something and this is full of toilet water and I went to take it off and boom all that came out at me because I forgot to close this valve and so that whole tank is just pressure up behind that cap and waiting for you to for it to pop off so always make sure your valves are shut before you start camping um, in fact um, some people will even leave the cap off while they're camping that way if they even though they have it shut if they happen to see a, a leak or something they know that maybe there's an issue um, they'll see it beforehand and they can maybe uh, do something about it um, before you get a mess shooting out at you the most important thing to do when you go to dump so now I've got my cap off I hook up my hose I put it in the into the uh, the dump site it's always best to pull your black tank first wait till it's completely done it's easy to get a clear elbow on there and that way you can tell when it's all drained out and once i do that i can pull my gray tank you can do both of those at the same time that's going to prevent the black water from washing up into one of those tanks and but it's also going to clean your hose out and the last thing you touch out with more cleaner water shower and kitchen sink water is cleaner than black so um, that's always the best way to do it after you're done with that you can hook up to your sewer flush which I'll show you in a second um, and the way you'll run that close your gray tanks 
open your black tank again with your hose on still of course and turn on the hose at the sh uh, sewer flush and that's going to shoot water inside that tank and help clean it out and that's just one of the things you need to do to keep up maintenance on your black tank you know, it's something that's been a never-ending battle in the rv industry for years is tank sensors they don't read correctly because they're so sensitive to water and moisture and anything that gets on those sensors so in addition to the sewer flush chemical in your tank every time you can uh, after you're done it doesn't hurt to fill it back up again drop a couple pods of commando down there let it sit um, a lot of people fill it up put the ice in there and then drive it around um, things like that that'll help keep that tank sensor is not only working good but it also keep it from um, having smells um, over time and everything else so there's um, quite a bit of maintenance done to the black tanks that you want to keep up on. Alright, and then we have your furnace exhaust here. So this is going to just expel hot air um, when your furnace is running. But the most important thing to it would be to keep a, a mud dauber screen, as they call them, um, attached to this. That's going to keep mud daubers, bees, uh, ladybugs, whatever the year's pest is. This year it's been stink bugs out of there. Mud daubers build nests way back in there and they can get it into the squirrel cage that spins and you turn it on and those those are you know pretty solid they we've seen them break the squirrel cage cause um backups in the gas system and stuff where your furnace won't work so that's just something you want to get on there it's a cheap kind of insurance policy to help keep your furnace running efficiently moving over here to the docking station this is where all your water is going to be um you have a, a a shower out here which has a separate hose which is in one of the storages um hot and cold pretty simple to operate over here you have your city water connection and the fresh tank fill is in one inlet so if you want to you're at a state or a, a regular campground you have a full hookup you'll hook your hose directly into here it's always best to come off of a pressure regulator um, that's another you know cheap 12 dollars uh, insurance policy to help keep lines from blowing out um, in case the pressure is too hot you hook your hose into here you got this blue lever which controls where the water goes so leaving it in the down position is going to shoot to all your your sink your toilet everything like that so you can turn that on go and you have an unlimited water supply from there if you wanted to fill up the fresh tank you're going to use the same inlet but you're going to flip this valve up and that's going to bypass it and shoot it into the tank underneath um, from there you can just let it fill until it starts shooting out of this tank vent here once you do that you know that it's completely full and you can turn your pump on the inside and start camping it's the exact same thing as this you're just going to have a limited water supply so just be aware of that the sewer flush is here this is what i talked about earlier with the black tank so you want to hook up a hose into here after you're done dumping your black tank and uh, turn it on let it run for you know, a few minutes unless you have a long line behind you waiting to exit the campground but um if you can't, it's always best to do that. Any anytime you can, take it somewhere. Take it if you if you live out in the country somewhere, you can dump it onto the ground. That'd be that be the best situation. This vent here, not a lot of units do this, um, and, I'm, and I don't have the exact reason why, but basically this is an overflow vent for the kitchen sink that's behind here. So it's the way it's piped in and trapped. It has an overflow in case the water ever did. If you didn't dump your gray tank or something and it's starting to overfill instead of coming back into the sink it'll usually come out and start draining out of here so if you ever saw water coming out of here you know your gray tanks full clogged or something's going wrong to where that's uh that's where that water's coming from it's from the sink that's right behind here so back here on the back um it's kind of new for outback passports and all these they have a ladder on the back full walk on the roof which is really important is you want to get up on the roof every couple months and check um, your sealants up there basically sealants don't have a warranty even when it's brand new because the sealants are the owner's responsibility you want to make sure that you're checking sealant around these especially right here along screw rail lines around lights um, usually windows are um, puttied in so you don't have to worry about uh, silicone around those and like the ladder you can see that these have silicone and if there was a split in the silicone and water got in there usually warranty will not cover any kind of leak damage because that's something the owner needs to be responsible for same with the roof and i try to stress that as much as possible that's almost every manufacturer unless it's you know within a few weeks of you buying it where you know something that maybe the manufacturer or the dealer should have caught um warrant you know these these seals flex they move they go down the road um, so you know these aren't forever seals this is something you have to check on 
all manufacturers usually use clear dap silicone on the outside and the roof is with keystone is alpha brand sealant it's usually self-leveling um uh, forest river and places like that um, they use die core still um just kind of depends on which you can find that out from the dealer and exactly on your model so you want to get up there and check that every couple months and if you notice anything seal it up yourself it's really easy um die core can stick to itself so you just level it out um, drop you a bead down and it'll level itself out and you don't have to well, worry about it anymore so um other than that this is prep for backup camera you have your 50 amp power detachable power cord down there below it's got outside speakers of course electric awning um, which not many don't these days you got key tv outputs here for cable and satellite in case you want to throw a tv on the on a bench right here or something outlets um you've got a uh, your storage in here but they've got these new uh, pull out containers in here that you can uh, get to your stuff a little easier let's uh, see that's pretty much it in there it's got a light of course and we'll move around go on the inside it's got the slingshot uh, door which I thought was pretty cool uh, new product that you can't have installed if your door down it keeps always keeps your screen door shut I just thought that was pretty cool Starting here in the kitchen, got a couple light switches there on the wall. You've got GFCI outlets. Um, you've got your roll up um, screen mat, so you can use this as kind of like a strainer kind of thing. Um, um, pull down sink. Standard uh, microwave, those are fairly easy to operate just like at home. Um, let's see. Um, stove, you got your overhead light and fan. You've got the uh, Furion stoves, which these are nice because they have um, you know, the lighting in the front. But what's really nice is that if they are on, it'll go red. So if a kid ever got up here and turned that on, and you know it's setting there pouring gas out into the unit you just you see that so that's a that's one of the coolest things i've seen um in the last few uh, two years as far as safety aspects go i thought that was pretty nice and um get different light switches so this one will do the same thing uh, but that one does the oven light uh, sparkers so when you do turn it on we turn it to the flame turn it a few times and if we had actually had lp hooked up it would light same with the oven you'll turn it to light hold it in though and then you turn it and light it there will be a little flame that develops on the very back of the stove underneath once you see that flame you can keep it held in for a few more seconds and then turn it to the temperature you'd like and then the whole bar will light up in a flame and you know it's lit and ready to go um, nice thing about it is even with the lights off it'll still do the red lighting and we always know if somebody accidentally kept a, a light or a it's our zero feed guarantee. Let's see, so we've got GE fridge in here. Pretty nice, you know, kind of standard uh, household style refrigerator. Pretty big. This is one of the main reasons why buying from Walnut Ridge Family RV Sales is an Over here, you got your uh, TV, you got your radio. Um, it's all pretty self explanatory how you use it. Um, the only thing with TV is that you need to run a, um, a channel scan, which is done through the menu of the TV every time you get to a new spot. Uh, so you can pick up the maximum amount of channels. Um, got a fireplace down below, which got switches on the side, you know, which that's electric only. So if you, you get some colder days while you're camping, but not cold enough to run your furnace, you can fire that up and have it run. And those heat pretty efficiently, really. The, um, they, they don't do a, too bad of a job. You know, they heat up this whole room fairly quickly and keep it there. Um, let's see, the rest of this is just cabinetry and space. Got three couches in here. Got the picnic style table, which I always thought was pretty cool. Control panel. It's going to have all your buttons, your switches, um, and everything on it for the unit. You have your water pump. That's only used if you're using the fresh tank itself. So the where you had to flip the lever up outside and fill up that tank, that's what that's for. You have your electric and gas water heater. And for the electric side to work, you have to have this switch on and the switch on the water heater I showed you earlier. Both have to be on for the electric to run. It's a safety feature. LP gas, you just flip it on. As long as you have LP, it'll light. It'll usually try three times. So if you hear it clicking out there and it doesn't light the first time, um, it'll throw a fault code. And usually you just gotta shut it off, turn it on again, 
and let it run again. Sometimes it takes a little while for the gas to reach where it needs to go. Um, you got tank monitor levels. You got fresh tank, battery, black one is your toilet. Um, this one's not used. Gray one is your bathroom sink and shower. Gray two is your kitchen sink. Like I said, this is the thing you fight with the black tank all the time. A lot of times it'll show that it's two-thirds full, but you know you just dumped it. That's where the sewer flush, chemicaling um, can help. There's nothing, not a lot of dealer can do about it that you couldn't do yourself. Um, you got your slide rooms and your awning here. So um, you can run those in. They're simple in and out controls. Um, LP leak detector below. That's going to um, tell you if there's ever an LP leak. Let's see, not too much in the closet back here. This is prepped for a second AC. In case you ever, if you wanted to put one on, it has the option to have one added in here. Um, huge bed, huge closet. Um, you got the bathroom back here. There isn't too much in here that we can't really, we can't go over, but GFCI reset breakers back here. So if you ever, um, if any outlets that like outside or the one in the kitchen is never working, you might check in here to make sure that you don't see a, a red light. If you do, you just hit the reset button. It's kind of like at home. Uh, most houses have those. Your shower doors, the biggest thing with these is make sure they're locked before you travel because you do not want this glass banging around. So always make sure they're locked. And then your toilet. you got a standard Dometic 310 toilet. Um, to fill this up with water, you just barely push on the foot lever below. Um, once it's full, you do your business. You push it all the way down, and then it'll shoot water in there and help dump it. When you go to use the tank, so like I said, close the black tank before you start using your camper. It also doesn't hurt to sit here and let this open up for a minute. Let three or four or five gallons get into that tank um, before so there's water in there to accept what's going down so it doesn't build up. I think that's pretty much it for this uh, Outback. Of course, it's got a fan, an exhaust fan up there you can open up. Um... I don't think there's much anything else. So that's pretty much it for this week. This is the Outback 341RD.